You're welcome back. Uh, right now, we're going to look at, like I promised you, how adoption of technology can help businesses in Nigeria navigate inflation. It seems to be a very uh, interesting topic. And uh, we're going to be talking with the country manager of Zoho Nigeria, and that is KND Ogundari. Good morning and welcome to the program, KND. Good morning, Agati. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Okay, um, let me just share a small story with you. There was a time I was supposed to buy some goods from someone uh, to the tune of just, um, not just, a whole 7,000 naira. That's not just in, nowadays, in Nigeria of today. Yes. But um, I asked the person to bring POS so that I can do the transaction with my ATM card. And he said his business has not grown enough to deploy that kind of technology. POS machine. So, which means <laughs> there is still the dragging of feet of people doing businesses in Nigeria uh, trying to deploy uh, technology. Now, is it their affordability? Is it their awareness? Whatever is happening, what do you think is the reason behind people not adopting technology as much as they should? Because that's what I think, they are not adopting technology as much as they should in Nigeria. What do you think is the problem? Well, thank you very much. So I think two things, right? People always have the notion that technology is very expensive and it's up there for people in enterprise business, corporate businesses. And secondly, I also feel like maybe the awareness is not there for a lot of businesses to understand how they can actually scale their business using much more technology, like POS, having an invoicing software to run your business. So I think it's the perception of most Nigerian businesses that technology is probably for big companies and then the awareness is not even there for businesses to understand that there are some technologies that are affordable for you to use to scale your business. Okay, when you talk about businesses that can use technology, what kind of businesses are you looking at? Is it everything or there are some? I think it's, I mean, I believe with 100% certainty that everybody doing business today, in 2023, should have a way of incorporating technology into their business. So it's for everybody, whether you are selling whatever by the roadside, you are in a big supermarket, or you are an enterprise company, you must find a way to incorporate technology into your business. Mm. What are some of these technologies that we really need in businesses, no matter how small, no matter how big, that you think Nigeria needs mostly? Um, a couple of them, actually. Uh, this is the new age for technology. Digital transformation is what is taking over the world right now. And I believe that a lot of businesses, they would need to use a marketing software, digital marketing platform to manage their uh, marketing activities, they would need collaborative and uh, productivity tools, and even for your sales to scale, you should have some sort of technology that you are using, like a CRM, right, that will you nurture your leads through the sales pipeline, give you insight into how your business is performing, and you can make informed decisions. So, uh, it's not even limited to that. You have human resource for managing your employees, for the uh, productivity as well, too. So, there are varieties of applications that you can use in your business. Uh, you're just mentioning these things, and I think you're assuming that we know all of them. <laughs> so um, <laughs> we need to know them, and, and then what the advantages of these things are uh, to businesses. Okay, so I'm going to start with the marketing activities, right? So nowadays, you will see a lot of businesses using Instagram to manage uh, their marketing activities, right? Now, imagine you have like three or four platforms to post your content, to do awareness and create some adverts for your products. You will need a software. So in my company, we have a solution called Do Social, right, that you can use to manage all the things. Now imagine you having that at the tip of your finger. You will be able to do that. Now talking about collaborative tool and production productivity tool, right, we have your email. One of the days when you have to sit in front of a big computer to write an email. Uh, we have uh, maybe spreadsheets write out what processor that you can actually use and every team member can actually collaborate at the same time 
on the same document, making it easier for anybody to work from anywhere. I wouldn't have to probably download and send to you, or I have to be in the same office to use sharing flash drive and pen drive to share documents. We can also do this in virtually anywhere in the world. Apart from that, we also have, let's say, um, sales ma management applications called the CRM, right? You will be able to manage that as well too directly with so with the application, you know, a CRM tool is there to help you streamline your sales process, nurture them through the sales pipeline, and at the end of the day, you will be able to make an informed decision. You know where you're spending your money, you know uh, what you need to do, you know your customer segment, then you will be able to make informed decision using the tools. Okay, um, when you want to branch off from your normal thing into something that you, something that is unknown, uh, you need some informed decisions. Those are some of the words that you're using. Informed decisions, yes. uh, very, very critical. So what are some of these things that uh, businesses need to consider? What are the critical factors that businesses need to consider before adopting technology in the first place? Okay, so I will probably mention to a few of them. Number one is what exactly is the pain point, right? If you are trying to optimize the way you do your business, let's say your sales department or your marketing efforts, what exactly are you looking to achieve? Then you now go into the market and look for the particular software that actually fits that purpose. Now, you have to consider scalability, you have to consider affordability, and at the same time, you have to consider user friendliness, right? Because if you're using a software that is not affordable, it's going to Lead into your budget if you cannot scale with the software. So, which means eventually, when your business grows, you will need to move out of that particular platform to another one. And user friendliness. Now, user friendliness is going to be very important factor for adoption of that new technology for your staff and employees. So, if it's not friendly, they will not be able to use it, and eventually, you will waste money using this uh, that you spend on technology. Mm. But how do we guard against this technology becoming bivastic? You know what I mean, bivastic. That's <laughs> bivast. Our bivast in election, you know the experience that we uh -huh. had. Uh -huh. <laughs> in some places it will work. In convenient places it will not work and all that. So how, how do we guard against or how do we make sure that this, this technology doesn't fail us at the critical moment that we need it? Okay. So um, technology is important, which is why I normally I encourage businesses that is trying to adopt new technology to do their research, right? There are a lot of measures you have to put in place. I mean, for businesses running that particular software, uh, we've got a lot of enterprise businesses running a software business in this country. You should do your research properly. As a business owner, you need to know uh, what are the policies, privacy policy, security policy, business continuity is very important. What happens to my data when I cannot access them? Who is going to be responsible? Who is accountable for that kind of thing? So those are the things you do at the initial stage of you trying to look at the market to adopt the technology. Mm. But what about the risk of all the security involved in it? Because so many people fear that once it has to do with technology, there are people who can hack the system, who can break into your system and do what they should not do. So how do you ensure security when you're adopting uh, this technology? Or when you're advising someone to adopt technology, you have to also give them the confidence that it's secure enough. How confident are you about that? Oh, yes, so there are a lot of security measures in place, compliance that every business owner, right, need to ask the, the provider. So if you're looking for a software now, you need to check their compliance level, you need to check their security, if they have the certification for those things. And trust me, before any business can get the certification from maybe say ISO, IPA compliance and stuff, right, they want to rigorous process and vetting. Right, before they can issue the certificate. So these are the things you should look out for. Are they certified? Are they in compliance with the government rules and regulations? So that will also help us to mitigate the effect of maybe cyber breach or attack. So how much of this impact will it have on the economy? Because uh, people are getting by and a lot of people still think that they don't need it because they can't do their transactions, all that. So what do you think, if this technology is be, um, deployed, it will do to the economy of Nigeria as a whole and the individuals? Okay, so I, I don't really agree with the fact that people say they don't need technology, right? Because even on a daily basis, 
business owners are using technology with or without them knowing, right? Like I mentioned, you have to use social media marketing uh, platform to do your marketing, right? So, and at the end of the day, you see the, cost, the operational cost for businesses is increasing on a daily basis. Now, imagine a situation whereby you have your employees working from home and at the same time, your productivity is gonna increase. We live in Lagos, you spend hours in traffic and stuff. By the time you get to work, you are tired. But imagine you've been in your house, 8 a.m. you log in, you are able to do a lot of things, collaborate with your team members, having a virtual meeting, you can chat, you can send documents easily. Automatically, that will increase your productivity, which in turn is going to lead to increase in revenue. And then the economy is going to grow with the adoption of technology. Okay. Uh, are you talking only to business owners or you, you're talking also to government? But if you're talking to government as well, in what areas do you think um, if we have to choose, uh, what areas do you think we should begin with to deploy technology that you think technology is not deployed enough? Um, so I'm speaking to the business owner as well as the government, right, because they have to give us an enabling environment for businesses to scale, right? And uh, when it comes to, uh, recently there was this new act, the uh, Nigeria Data Protection Act, that was enacted by the federal government, and that was actually a very good welcome development, given the fact that we need to now take charge of our data in this country, right? That was a really good one. And at the same time, I'm going to encourage maybe probably the government to uh, make policies that will enable people to actually use the technology, bring awareness to the business owners and the markets, the small, medium enterprise, give them the enabled environment. They can use software to build and scale their business. Okay, I was going to ask that, you know, what kinds of policies do you think the government should make? Specifically, do you have anyone in mind that you think, uh, if made by the government, it will make it easier for people to adopt this technology and use it for their benefit, and uh, which also will translate to the national benefit? Um, so specifically, I'm not going to say a specific instance, but I believe that uh, we are policy makers in this country that uh, when they're making decisions, they should consider the small businesses in mind, right? When they're trying to make financial or economic decisions, they should consider how that is going to impact businesses. Also, speaking about the finances and economy of the country, it's very imperative to know that small businesses in this country, they, have, they contribute to the larger percentage to our GDP. So, which means we need to give them incentives, incentivize them, and then um, um, do some awareness to bring them to the platform. And also, the government is going to benefit. Imagine using a, a finance software to, um, to manage your finances within the organization. It will be easier for the business to actually probably pay their tax, calculate how much they have to pay on their return. And at, at the end of the day, the government is going to make um, revenue from that as well, too. Okay, when you talk to um, large enterprises, big enterprises, you talk about uh, using hybrid work models and all that and how it's going to help them to save costs as an option to help them save costs and all that. Can you uh, explain more uh, what it means to have a hybrid model? What is it, is it at all in the first place? Okay, great. So an hybrid model is when you work few days in the office and you work few days at the comfort of your home or anywhere in the world you may be, right? Now, currently, we re they remove subsidy from the field, right? And uh, everybody's feeling the impact in this country, let me tell you, right? Everybody's feeling the impact. What you used to buy at 7,000 is probably now 25,000 or 30,000, you know? Now, the cost of running the organization is, going, is also increasing on a daily basis. Now, if you operate the hybrid mode, right, which means Maybe you do three days in the office, two days at home, or two days in the office, three days at home, you are going to reduce your operational cost significantly. At the same time, your employee will be able to work at the comfort of their home, so which means they will be happy doing what they are doing. At the same time, they can collaborate better, they have peace of mind, and they don't have to worry about moving and transiting from one point to another point to get their job done. So I think it's a welcome development that any business should actually consider hybrid mode at this point in time. How does that work for things like schools, for instance? Oh, there are e-learning platforms, actually, because I mean, I work in tech, so I can say there are e-learning platforms that people can actually use. Schools can encourage students, probably, maybe 
they can go for a test run, right? We have some platform that you can use, right? E-learning platform are there, even for businesses too, there's LMS, learning management system that you can actually incorporate as well to train and retrain your employee, right? Then schools can also adopt the e-learning platform, maybe so they can go to school a few days that they can probably virtually connect with their classmates. During COVID-19, a lot of schools actually adopted that option, right? And they can, I believe that they can build on that and then continue using it. But that was um, for private schools mostly, because I, I don't see any public school uh, that will have e-learning platforms the way you're talking at the moment. Because the challenges will be that you will need to have a device that you can do the e-learning. These are people, some of whom come from homes that do not have a phone. And if they do have a phone, one phone, it will be a phone that is not Android even. So these challenges will be posed. Uh, and how do you think that the government or whoever is involved can, can surmount these challenges and do what you're asking that be done? Um, so I think our educational system can also look at uh, a way to incorporate technology in the way we do things. Like you mentioned, rightly mentioned, private, you know, private schools, most, I mean, mostly, they will have the facilities to be able to adopt the e-learning platform, whereas our public school, they will need to catch up, right? I will encourage the government to provide their facilities, uh, their amenities, to encourage middle, I mean, public school students to adopt the e-learning platform. So we need to do better in our private, I mean, in our public school settings. Okay, um, well, you know the advantages, you know everything about uh, technology, at least you know uh, enough uh, that you can advise us. Just let's take a final word from you. Talk to the Nigerians who have not uh, had it in, in mind to imbibe this culture of using technology for almost everything. Now we see that technology is in the kitchen, technology is even in the bathroom, technology is everywhere. But our people are taking their time, they are still dragging their legs. So just speak to the people of Nigeria why you think they need to adopt this technology, which will sum up everything that we've been talking on the program now so that we can just wrap up. Yes, so um, what I would normally advise people is there is no wrong way to start a technology, right? Just act small. Right, you can start with small application, you can start with anything, you know. Just understand your business and see the kind of audience you are trying to appeal to and you can adopt technology. Trust me, if you adopt technology, it's going to make your life a lot, lot easier and your business scalability is going to be guaranteed, right? You will be able to use that to scale, make decisions. At the same time, you will be able to even save costs drastically, given the condition of the economy in this country right now. You will be able to save operational costs while you adopt the technology to run your business. So consider social media marketing, consider collaborative and productivity tool, consider human resource management applications, and all these things combined together is going to be uh, useful for you to scale your business. Okay, thank you so much, Kind Dave, for coming on the show this morning to talk to us about technology and the need to adopt it. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Okay, that was Kende Ogundari, Country Manager, Zoho, Nigeria, talking with us on technology and the need to imbibe the culture of technology. And that is how we are going to wrap up the show today. But before we go, we'll leave you with the words of Robert Eager, CEO of Disney. He said, the heart and soul of a company is creativity and innovation. So... That's how we wrap it up and draw the curtain for today. On behalf of my entire team on The Breakfast, my name is Nyamgul Agaji saying thanks for being there. <laughs>